Good evening and thank you for joining us for another episode of Business PNG for the year 2015. Benjamin Franklin once said, there are two things certain in life, taxes and death. Whether paying your tax every fortnight to the tax man or simply buying from your local grocery shop, paying tax is unavoidable and vital to any economy. Business PNG spoke to Andrew Harris from Deloitte about navigating your way through goods and services tax. GST, Goods and Services Tax, is imposed on the sale of goods and services in Papua New Guinea or the importation of goods into Papua New Guinea. GST is imposed at a rate of 10% of the value of the goods and services sold. GST was introduced into PNG by the Goods and Services Tax Act 2003 and is administered by the IRC and Customs. Having worked for Deloitte within their Tax and Business Services Division in Tanzania, Uganda and now Papua New Guinea is Mr. Andrew Harris, who explains the similarities between the economies of the different countries he's worked in. Business PNG had the pleasure of interviewing Mr. Harris on the topics of tax and GST, the basics as well as the societal issues that come with it. But well, basically GST is a what they call a, um, a broad-based consumption tax. So that means it is a tax that applies to... Um, consumer goods. Uh, so the idea of it is it's a tax on the end consumer. Uh, so if you're a business, uh, you're the one that raises GST, you charge your consumer the GST. If that business is, um, that you're charging um, is also registered for GST, they can claim back the GST in most cases and then they pass it on to their consumers. So it's a bit like uh, our four-year-old's birthday party when you got past the parcel. It's the last person in the line uh, is the one that actually wears the cost of the GST, and ordinarily that's the uh, the individual. So say it was um, something like this table, um, you've got the person who sells the wood, uh, so they'd have GST on that, they sell it to the, the manufacturer. Uh, the manufacturer would claim the GST that they've incurred on buying the wood, but then when they have to sell it to the retailer, um, they'd charge the retailer GST. The retailer in turn would then <laughs> have their margin on it, um, and they'd recover GST they incurred and they'd charge GST. So slowly the value of the supplies um, are increasing and that's as you go up the value chain. The GST at each level increases and it's only until you get to the final stage, which is when you sell to the, the individual, say, um, that that is the actual final cost of the GST. Um, so unfortunately for us individuals, it's, it's really a tax on us. Um, the idea is not to uh, affect business behaviour. With tax, it's, it's something that's always there. Um, they say that uh, the two things certain in life is death and taxes. Um, and you know, you're not sure how you're going to die and, and often how you pay tax is not sure either. So uh, it pays to, to think about tax and how it affects you and try and understand it. Um, and if you're a business, uh, think about um, whether or not you're complying correctly. Because uh, if you get it wrong, then the penalties are, are very steep. Um, as in, if you get income tax um, wrong, you pay a 20% upfront penalty uh, plus 20% per annum. So that should be incentive enough for people to pay attention um, and think about their taxes and, and make sure they're educated enough to actually uh, pay tax. But tax, um, it's an unfortunate thing, but it's, it's one of the uh, necessities of, of being in um, society. In that, uh, if we want to participate in society, we need to contribute so the government has uh, money to to provide the services that we expect that they will provide. Mr. Harris then also outlines the tax training that Deloitte had set up for the members of the public. He highlights the importance of tax, stating simplistically that if one wishes to be a part of society, then one must contribute in the form of tax in order for the government to have revenue to provide the services we as a society expect them to. 
At a recent session at the Grand Papua Hotel, Deloitte hosted a tax training within the theme of navigating your way through goods and services tax, facilitated by Mr. Andrew Harris himself. The tax training was about simplifying GST, all the while stressing the importance to get GST compliance right the first time around. Deloitte uh, is running quite a few um, different trainings uh, and we're working our way through the different taxes and I'll tell you about what those taxes are soon. Um, but the idea behind the training is just to give our clients just a better understanding of, um, in this case, um, the one we've got tomorrow is GST, which stands for Goods and Services Tax. Uh, and it's just to give them a better idea of how the tax operates, um, when it applies, how do you comply with it, uh, what forms you need to fill out, when do you need to fill them out, uh, what happens if you get it wrong, how do you correct an error, um, what are the penalties if you get it wrong, uh, which is quite an important part of it because the penalties can be quite high. Um, and to answer any questions that they have, so uh, tax is one of those things that uh, when you first look at it can seem quite simple. Um, and, and GST, uh, can, most people know it's at 10% and it affects most goods, but when you start scratching the surface, uh, you think... Um, we well, start to see that there's a lot of exceptions there. Uh, GST doesn't apply to everything, uh, and sometimes it applies to things at a rate of zero. Uh, and sometimes it has some uh, products that are exempt rated, which is confusingly different to a zero rated product. Um, it has different consequences for GST. Um, and some uh, taxpayers are not, or are basically zero rated taxpayers, so. Uh, what starts off as something quite simple can uh, end up being quite, quite confusing when you start to dig into it. So they say that a little bit of knowledge can be a dangerous thing and uh, that's certainly the case with tax in that someone might know a bit about a particular tax and think they know enough. Um, so the idea of this training is to give them a, a better understanding so they know uh, what the pitfalls are, the potential pitfalls. Um, and you know, if they have any questions, um, it's an opportunity to ask those questions. Coming up on the show, the OBG Corner with Mark Venditti. Stay with us. In this edition of the OBG Corner, editorial manager of the PNG Report, Mark Venditti, chats with Jonathan Sito from PricewaterhouseCoopers. Good evening and welcome back to Oxford Business Group uh, Corner. Our uh, guest tonight is Jonathan Sito. He's the managing partner of PwC, which is one of the largest um, professional services company in the world. Uh, I think we're lucky to have Jonathan here tonight because Jonathan is a pretty difficult uh, man to catch. He's not uh, one of the typical executive you might find in social gathering, but you will find him late at night at his office still working. <laughs> so I think we should be happy to have him here. Uh, PwC, uh, for m people that might not know it, uh, is a very uh, large multinational company. It's present in, in 157 countries around the world. It employs about 200,000 people, and so uh, it has a revenue in 2014 of 34 billion US dollars. One very important thing is the top firms to work for in the United States for two consecutive years. So Jonathan, thank you very much. Welcome to the show. Uh, PwC in uh, Papua New Guinea, are you making a difference and uh, what are your main goals at the moment? Absolutely, Marco. Look, yeah. thank you for having me on the show. Um, PwC, if I could just share a little bit about PwC and PNG, we're, we're about a 10 partner practice, about 200 people and one of the largest accounting firms in PNG. Yeah. Um, w we absolutely are making a difference in, in PNG and that's part of our mantra, if you like, in terms of um, not just being accountants but contributing to um, you know, the growth of business in PNG. Okay. Why there is so much need worldwide with a uh, company like yourself, professional services? Why this is such an important uh, segment of, of, of the industry, of, of business, anywhere around the world? There is lack of uh, capabilities, lack of talent? What, what is that? No, I think um, organisations appreciate an independent perspective on things and giving a, a different perspective. Okay. And so, you know, many of our clients are very capable in themselves, but having uh, an independent uh, person giving a different perspective is, is always, um, 
you know, um, a good way of uh, doing business. It's a good friend to have. Yeah. That's the same reason why I <laughs> invited you here tonight, because I want an independent take on what is happening in PNG, and that's why you're here. Uh, one question I wanted to ask you, obviously, that relates in a way to the business that you're conducting, is that the PNG government decision to review the 2015 budget. Uh, when it was announced, uh, uh, everybody was sort of a bit skeptical, but not so much, but obviously what happened after with the collapse almost of the uh, oil prices, uh, there was going to be uh, a need for a review. Uh, the government has just announced it, uh, recently actually, um, at the, the beginning of the month. Uh, people are saying a bit late, other people are saying better late than never. Uh, what, what's your take on that? Look, I know when the 2015 budget was announced in, in November last year, um, soon after, the oil and gas prices came, came crumbling down. Right. Um, we're a resource-rich uh, country. We rely on resources, so everyone should expect that you know we are exposed to volatility in global prices. No one can anticipate, as much as we try to, what the prices might be, and so there is always an expectation of um, business and governments that um, should prices change, um, you know there might be a change in the budget. Um, I think the government now recognises this, the impact that, that the drop in the oil prices and gas prices is having on, on, on the country, and so that's fantastic. Um, and so the mini budget, I guess, is one way of one taking stock of where we're at. Um, I know there's been a lot of um, uh, discussion in the media and discussion in society generally about the impact. And so it'll be great to understand the government's perspective through the mini budget. Um, and to take stock and to see where we're actually at. Um, I don't think it's, um, it takes a rocket scientist to determine that there will be an impact. You know, when the budget was set, I think the oil price uh, assumption there was around 89, 89 US. Yes. As we sit here today, the oil price is around 60 and fluctuates between 50 and 60. And so there is definitely a difference. Um, we welcome the idea of, you know, reviewing where we're at. I see, <coughs> obviously. Uh, how big is uh, this problem, you think, for the budget? Look, I mean, we have seen uh, numbers being, um, you know, uh, discussed. Yes, in, in you don't go to social gatherings. <laughs> I hear all kinds of things. Yeah, there are all sorts of numbers being, being discussed, and I, I wouldn't want to proffer a number, but um, um, over the next couple of years, I think one, uh, um, you know, there has been discussion about, um, you know, um, over the next couple of years, the deficit could be as high as 2.5 billion. Um, I don't know, we haven't modelled the numbers ourselves, but I think the sentiments are that there will be a, a bigger budget deficit. I see. Now, what does it mean for some of the very ambitious projects that this country had on the pipeline? Uh, this mini budget means that probably some of them will be put aside, especially when it comes to infrastructure. I mean, a lot of liquidity has been sucked uh, for the Pacific Games, I must say the city looks great, better than has ever been, and uh, I think you're in favor, I suppose, of this sort of events. But at the same time, it's taking away a lot of the, a lot of the liquidity. Uh, so, where do we stand at the moment with that? Yeah, I mean, I think the question might be, you know, what can government do to mitigate this this event, if you like? Um, there are a number of things the government could do, and I think one of them is cut spending. Uh, the other thing could be deferring expenditure. You know, if that doesn't happen, then um, the government's got to fund it in some way, and usually that's through debt. Um, um, so, so I think that we, you know, I, I don't think all is lost. There's an opportunity to get this, to correct this, and get this right. I see. <coughs> but at the same time, Moody has just changed PNG's sovereign credit rating to a negative outlook. Yeah. Uh, they're saying that after the fall of uh, or energy and other commodity prices, uh, royalties and the profitability of associated companies, uh, that's serious. What, what, what does it mean? I mean, uh, that is PNG in a way losing a little bit of its status that it has gained over several years of continuous double-digit growth? No, look, I don't think so. I mean, I think what Moody's has, has done is, is a, a reflection of fact that the um, government does rely, the country does rely on the LNG revenues. And so given the drop in oil prices and gas prices, I mean, it is inevitable um, that you get a, such a, re a reaction from Moody's. I think the key is that one, the government recognises that, and two is what it will do 
to uh, stem this issue, to address this issue. And as I said, there are a number of opportunities for doing that. Um, how does that impact future, future projects? I don't think um, future projects really hinge on that at the moment. I mean, the, future, the big projects, if you're talking about Wapu, Wafi, Golpu, Gol etc., those projects are hinged on uh, global demand and supply um, of, of resources and resource prices, so nothing yes. really to do with the PNG government per se. Having said that, it is important um, that PNG manages, um, manages our way through this particular issue. I see. Well, talking about that, one of your main uh, tasks is to sort of assess risk in a way. I mean, assurance, I think, is one of the, the most important segments of your, of your business. Would you say that this government is still keeping, uh, taking too many risks in the fact that it's not diversifying quick enough? Uh, is econ the economy really to be competitive on a global scale and re still relying too much on extractive industries? And, and that's the, the price you have to pay, I suppose. Look, I think this is part of a longer term journey, right? And so we, you know, um, we, we've got to play on our strengths. Our strengths are in the resources, oil and gas sector. And so, um, you know, you can't, you, you can't um, not do that. I, I think that's critical. But what's important is that the government has a vision for the future. And, and we see that. Um, that vision for the future and putting the right things in place. So we've seen more recently the allocation of budget to infrastructure. We recognise that if we don't have the right infrastructure, we aren't going to be able to realise our potential as a country and, a, and, a, and an economy. So putting, um, allocating um, resources to things like, you know, um, infrastructure, power, telecommunications are fundamental to realising some of the potential you can get either from the immediate term in terms of the resource sector or from you know, th uh, the future landscape of business in general. I see. So what you're saying is diver diversification, yes, it is important, but perhaps not so much now. It's more important is to overall the infrastructure. This is what the country needs more than anything else. So using what you have, which is extractive industry. Yeah, I think it's, it's a balancing act, right? Mm -hmm. So um, absolutely, using as best you can the resources you have right now, to set yourself up, up for the future. I see. One thing that uh, it's uh, very important is tax collection and this country I think could do a lot more and in a way this ties to the one of the first questions about the, the mini budget you know how can that fit into the equation? Yeah. So my expectation on the mini budget, and we don't know the details of the mini budget, but we can only anticipate that there's not going to be much changes in terms of tax, um, and it's more around government expenditure. Um, that's the first thing. The second thing, of course, to help the government's cash flow situation and is to improve our tax collections. Our tax collections are quite low when you, when you benchmark against um, other, pe uh, other countries in the, in the region. Not to mention Australia, obviously. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And so there's a huge scope for improvement in terms of accelerating that collection. I think the IRC uh, more recently has invested significantly in its um, information systems. So the implementation of SIGTAS is a, is a, is a great um, initiative for accelerating and improving co co collections from taxpayers. Right. Can you give us some numbers? Like what do you think, what sort of difference could it make really? Look, I know it's difficult to, to it, it's estimate. Absolu but it's absolutely, sense. absolutely difficult. But if if I could say that some of the initiatives that are in place now is, for example, broadening the tax source. So that means not um, increasing taxes, but certainly um, broadening the way taxes are captured is one way of improving collections. The IPA put out a statistic some time ago that there were approximately forty two thousand five hundred registered businesses. Um, the IRC uh, indicated that they've only got 2,000 registered taxpayers. So there's a huge gap in the middle then. And I think they, the estimation is that 70 to 80 percent of tax revenues is collected from 250 companies. So those statistics indicate there's huge scope for uh, capturing um, taxes and improving you know, the government's liquidity in general. So basically that creates a little bit of a situation of discontent where you have those few companies well run, well structured that they have to pay taxes for a number of them that they don't. 
uh, and that obviously it's something that doesn't go well in the in the business landscape and the corporate landscape of any country. I suppose in PNG that problem is even more acute, let's say. Absolutely, and as a firm we've been saying, maybe the effort, given the limited resources of the Internal Revenue Commission, what they should be doing is looking at um, areas that, to maximise collections beyond the 250, 250 companies. So maybe putting resources to the um, untaxed, if you like, um, that should be taxed. The people, sorry, the people who aren't paying taxes that should be ta taxed. I see. Um, something that ties to this also is the, the lack of liquidity that we've seen in the market, especially from uh, about foreign currency. I mean, a lot of, of uh, businesses are complaining, very difficult to get hold of uh, foreign currency nowadays. If they want to buy new equipment, it's very complicated. This is putting a sort of a top on uh, on uh, business growth in PNG, wouldn't you say that? Is it a really, I mean, does it worry you when you look at that? I mean, it, can, and it concerns many of our clients, and so we hear this um, day in, day out, yes. that the, the impact it's having. Um, you know, my feeling was it would reach a, a point where, um, you know, it, the issue would be addressed. Um, we haven't seen it, but it is certainly a worrying concern for, for our clients. For a number of people. <laughs> General, do you feel uh, we are, you know, turning the six months of the year? You know, so that's that's a very interesting point to look at what has happened so far. You know, macroeconomic stability, political stability, uh, economic growth, and so on. Are you happy with what you've seen in the first six months of the year? Look, directionally, I, I think we have challenges, but directionally, are we heading in the right direction? Are we trying to do the things to address some of the, those challenges? I think yes. Um, you know, we've, we've had a number of events in the economy, such as the foreign exchange issues, the uh, perception around liquidity, um, Moody's rating, etc. And those things, you know, do um, take confidence out of, um, you know, um, reduce confidence levels. Um, but directionally, are we, are we trying to address those challenges as a country? Absolutely, yes. And, and I think that's what keeps us here and keeps us being, being positive. Um, we talked earlier about the Pacific Games, you know, um, some people, you know, uh, would argue why, you know, why we would be um, committing such spend to the Pacific right. Games, but I think we need those sorts of things. So, you know, with some of those challenges, there's a, a sense of optimism um, with the Games. It's created a lot of um, um, economy, economic activity in, in PNG. Synergies as yeah, well. Absolutely. And yeah. so I think all these are, are essential and part of a, a developing and growing country. I see. You travel, you're travelling abroad probably more than I do lately. <laughs> and, uh, yes. Would you say that the perception of PNG is changing out there? Like people, the way they look at PNG now? Oh, uh, look, l last week I was in Fiji okay. and I attended the PNG Fiji Business Council meeting in Fiji. And you know, there are a lot of interest from, from Fiji and we've seen a lot of um, bilateral trade movements between the two countries. And the room at the, in, um, at the conference centre was full. Just a clear indication of people are looking at, at PNG in a different way and open-minded open about PNG. I see. So the future is bright, would you say, for this country? I mean, if we look at the map of the world and we see where PNG sits, and you have, you're surrounded by these uh, countries that yeah. are starving for natural resources and commodities. You know, you have Asia is booming. Uh, PNG is perfectly positioned. Absolutely, isn't it? absolutely. I think PNG is in a privileged position, and so it is important how, it is important that we try to realise our potential in the best way possible and we recognise that we are in a privileged position. We're in part of a, a, the a global region where it, it is the region for, of growth and so tapping into that and um, um, is essential. Um, I think the level of engagement that the government has, uh, has um, um, the effort that government has gone to increase engagement with the global community is fantastic. Um, having APEC here in a, couple of, in a few years time I think you know a lot of people are sort of saying why once right. once again, but it is about engagement. It is about changing the the region and the, and the global view of PNG. Um, we're a resource rich country and have a lot of um, you know opportunities 
and and so I'm forever the optimist, Marco. <laughs> <laughs> good, good, good to hear that. And actually, you're harping a lot on this engagement with the global community. It seems to be the buzzword for you today. You feel that this country is ready to move that sort of step forward and notch up uh, and be engaged much more with the global community than has been in the past. Look, I think so. I mean, I think um, you know we need to recognise that we are part of the global community. Sometimes we can be a little bit um, limit, isolated. isolated in our thinking. So I think it is important that we recognise we're part of the global community. I think, for example, foreign investment. We are competing in um, for foreign investment um, into into PNG um, against you know the global community, and there's a limited. Um, uh, availability of, of funds for investment across the globe Absolutely. and so we need to put our best foot forward uh, to encourage that sort of um, uh, investment in our country. Well there you are, the budget review, that's, that's a possibility isn't it? The, 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 there could be changes there to improve and to attract more foreign investment, what wouldn't you say? Um, um, well I, I think uh, the budget is more um, probably more internally focused, but certainly, um, you know, the opportunity for recognising that we need to engage more broadly, that we need to, you're, you're right, set policies that uh, encourage sort of investment and put PNG higher on the, um, on the priority lists. Um, and, um, uh, Do you feel yeah. that sometimes the government doesn't see that clearly? I mean, I've been talking to a lot of mining companies that they're worried about, uh, you know, this new mining act and some of the talks about uh, uh, actually making changes that are going to is going to hinder uh, investment instead of promoting, and especially in an industry that is in in in, in dire straits. I mean, mining it's it's been you know I th going I th through tough time. I think it's a balancing act. You know, the gov government has an obligation to ensure the national interest of PNG. And so that needs to be balanced against, um, um, you know, leveraging all opportunities. So, uh, you know, it's not an easy task, I don't, I, I don't think. Um, but certainly, yes, you know, ensuring that there's an alignment between government policy, the bureaucracy and executing agencies is important because that creates stability, consistency of messaging that businesses need to make decisions. Absolutely. Balancing act. They, they found a balance, you think, or they're still working on it? I think it's a work in progress. But <laughs> as I said, I think directionally, I think we're going in the right direction. I see. Jonathan, thank you so much. Thank you, Marco. Appreciate your comments. Yeah, pleasure. Thank you very much for watching this. And uh, we'll welcome again next week for the next uh, issue of uh, edition of uh, Oxford Business Group Corner. Thank you very much. And that's all we have for you tonight. For more business news, or if you would simply like to view this episode again, visit MTV online at www.mtv.com.pg. Or to join the conversation, like our page on Facebook for daily business news, or follow us on Twitter at BusinessPNG using the hashtag BusinessPNG. Until next week, enjoy the rest of your viewing on MTV. I'm Leanne Durari, and this was BusinessPNG.